Hi there, my name is Sarah Jacobs and welcome to my Capstone Documentary. This has been a long time in the making, so I hope you enjoy it. What I will be focused on today is how technology will be implemented throughout the fashion industry. What anyone needs to know when it comes to growing technology is that it is an artificial intelligence. And no, not a scary type of artificial intelligence, but rather a new type of intelligence. One filled with concepts like blockchain and cryptocurrency. Blockchain is a system that records transactions in bitcoins and other forms of currency. It's maintained across a peer-to-peer -peer network. Cryptocurrency is a digital currency which regulates units of currency to verify transactions. Simply put, blockchain is the system that all the online transactions go through and cryptocurrency verifies your order. Blockchain is useful because it would reduce the amount of excess product being made and furthermore reduce the amount of money getting charged to the customer to cover the cost of the excess product. An example of, the, of this is a brand we all know very well, H&M. They advertise themselves as the world's most ethical company. Their newest advertisement is that they don't let fashion go to waste, going as far as putting out bins in their stores to quote-unquote recycle clothes. Forbes Business Magazine put out a story expanding on an incident in March of 2018, where New York Times reported that H&M had $4.3 billion of untold industry. An investigation claims it and Danish clothes company bestsellers unsold togs end up making this journey secretly filmed to a giant incinerator in Roskilde. The unsold clothes go up in smoke because, says H&M, they've been damaged in transportation by humidity, for example, or have too high chemical levels. Campaigners dispute this and say the company's policies are hypocritical and unsustainable. The production of one pair of jeans requires 3,625 litres of water, 400 megajoules of energy, 3 kilos of chemicals. And if we incinerate jeans, then it makes a mockery of global sustainability. The investigation claims H&M has incinerated 60 tons of clothes since 2013. Intercepted company mails from H&M and bestseller confirm water damage is an issue, but the journalists selected two pairs at random from the discards and found nothing wrong. Another similar incident happened with an athletic clothing store, Under Armour. Business Insider revealed that Under Armour possessed $1.3 billion in unsold inventory. It's, they have to do something. And you know, even if they get inventory in line with sales by the end of the year, as they said in the, uh, in, in the, on the conference call today, uh, inventory is still likely, you know, over $250 million heavier than, it, than an optimum point because inventory has been inflated over the last few years. What about this idea that they can get cool again with big hits like Hover and what Plank told me, which is they've got a huge innovation pipeline and they're really excited about 2019. It's going to explode were his words. And that'll just, you know, the inventory issues, they'll work themselves out as they promised on the call. Both of these examples are because of the lack of standardization when it comes to buying and selling in bulk. Blockchain would make these companies such as H&M and Under Armour more accountable for how much of their merchandise is being manufactured. An example of a company using technology for good is an indie brand called Nastigal. It was started by a woman named Sofia Amoruso. She started Nastigal from her bedroom at the age of 22. She started on eBay in 2006 and sold old clothes she bought from thrift stores and estate sales. Between 2009 and 2012, her sales were growing multifold. She was even acclaimed for being America's richest self-made woman by Forbes magazine. Then in 2016, Amoruso mismanaged Nastigal and filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The brand was eventually sold to British online retailer Boohoo.com for $20 million. Although the company was sold to Boohoo, Nastigal clothing is still bought to this day. The fashion industry operates under a linear economy where fabric comes from natural fibers derived from fossil fuels which is spun into yarn. That yarn becomes a piece of apparel which lives its short life and ends up in the trash not long after. 12.7 million tons of textile waste end up in the U.S. landfills each year. Moving forward, technology could have a big impact on the lifespan of everyday clothing. For those answers, I went to Blueback Square in West Hartford. I interned at a small boutique my junior year of high school called Ula La Boutique. I wanted to interview Darlene, the owner, because she is now the only small business clothing store owner in Blueback Square. This is Darlene. Because of all of her success, I had some questions for her. So I do a lot of things with technology, believe it or not. Um, one of the things that I really like is one of my buying services. I can take something that I like, let's see if I see a picture of it, or someone shows me a picture of something that they like and I have um, the world's largest online shopping mall at my fingertips where I can take a picture, stick it in there, and it'll show me things that look sim similar to it. So that's really nice because I can really customize something for someone that really wants something. 
and I like that kind of customer service. Um, the other thing I guess with technologies is I communicate through Facebook and Instagram with my clientele, and I think that that is my most important um, way in which to deliver my product to the community. What she means by the world at her fingertips is this app called Fashion Go, and she's right. She can upload a picture or a description of a certain clothing piece, and the app gives the closest garment to the description it has. This is usually very similar, as it has thousands of indie brands to choose from. For sure. Like, Facebook and Instagram is where I really communicate everything. I don't do any print advertising. Um, I spent, I hate to say this, almost 30 years in television advertising, and I don't do anything like that. <laughs> so it's all through Instagram and Facebook. We do try-ons. I put my clothes that we get in here weekly on there. I only buy a very limited amount of clothing so people have a sense of urgency um, to hurry up and come into the store to try it on or they'll, they'll message me and say, can you hold this in a small for me? Or I'm coming in, what are your hours? So it's a good way to have a rapport and to communicate. The benefits of technology for small businesses include brighter brand exposure, natural communication with customers, streamlined accounting and advanced project management, and much, much more. Well, everyone always says, oh, you should go online, and that's my debate every day. I'm thinking, oh, should I do that, should I not? But again, as I said before, I only buy a really limited amount. I'm really not into trying to have Ula La be in you know, 52 states. That's not really what my, my motive is here. I just want people to come in, local business, be happy. Women feel confident in what they're wearing because I think it makes you feel so much better um, and be more confident if you feel comfortable in your skin and in your clothing. So that's really what I try to accomplish. I don't know like if there's any major development that I, I'm looking to do. I would like to or have a second floor with just shoes. That ain't happening. So. <laughs> right. I think so. I mean, I'm a real local business, and I try to partner with the high schools and with the gymnastics team. And I support um, the ballet theater group in West Hartford that has, you know, classes for a variety of people, plus then they give classes to people who can't afford them. Um, I also um, have the Connecticut Nutmeg, this Connecticut um, organization, I sponsor them um, every year. So those are local businesses, but, you know, United Way comes in here and the um, any other business that comes in here, and I'm always donating gift certificates or something um, to do, or we even do promotions here at, at at the location where I give back a per percent of my sales for the evening for the charity. So I do try a lot to be local business because that's what I am. Thank you. You're welcome. Small businesses such as Ulala La are benefiting greatly from technology. In addition, technology is giving way to a new type of small business, that being online thrift stores. I try to couple myself to show how easy they are and to show physically the process of using these outlets. First, I tried ThreadUp. Because it is so popular, I decided to try it out myself. I ordered myself a clean-out kit. This is a new type of transportation for the clothing that is unique to ThreadUp. They send consumers a big bag, return label included and paid for, and a piece of paper giving suggestions on how to get rid of common stains. This ensures that the customer gets the maximum amount of money for their garment. ThreadUp realizes that fashion will drain a quarter of the world's carbon budget by to the year 2050, and wants to do their part to decrease that. ThreadUp was founded in 2009 and since then has become the world's greatest resale marketplace. Customers have access to over 35,000 brands at up to 90% off retail price. ThreadUp's wish is to make a new generation that thinks of secondhand first before fast fashion. ThreadUp manages the c clothes out of upcycle centers, of which they have redistributed over 65 million pieces of clothing from. This looks a little excessive. <laughs> it's because it most definitely is. But it's all from ThreadUp, so really... I'm just doing my part to help the world be more sustainable. Right? By the first month, everything from my bag but one thing had been sold. This, by this time, I had gotten back around $37. To use your money, you can buy something else on the website, use your money for credit at one of their partner stores, or you can transfer it to your bank account. I believe ThreadUp gives their customers good options of where they can spend their money. Then I looked into Poshmark. Poshmark is an online marketplace app where, that makes it easy to sell used textiles online. There are over 3,000 brands listed on the marketplace. Poshmark has been around since 2011 and for internet stores, they are considered to be a well-established brand. What makes Poshmark so advanced is that it is best used in a smartphone app, which is different from their competitors such as eBay and Craigslist. 
which is easier on a desktop. If you buy an item and end up not liking it, just contact Poshmark within several days, print a label, and return the item. Overall, I found that Poshmark is both effective for buyers and sellers alike. I wanted to get to the bottom of which one was better, though, Poshmark or ThreadUp. Looking at the numbers, when it comes to racking up the cash, Poshmark is the smarter option, but ThreadUp is much easier to work with. I believe it all depends on what the seller is looking for. If you are in it for the money, Poshmark is the way to go, as they only take 20% of the income if the item is over $15. If you were just trying to get rid of clothes and trying to see if you could get a couple dollars off of it, ThreadUp is better. What I was most interested in was the concept of circular economy. The idea of clothing, after being given up, being repurposed into something else to keep the textile out of the landfills. The Ellen MacArthur Foundation focuses on making the circular economy more mainstream. In an interview with Peter Morgan, the founder of the foundation, he stated that a circular economy addresses resource-related challenges for businesses and economies. I reached out to them hoping to ask them a couple questions, but they were unable to do that at that time. I also researched many Instagram pages that took thrift store clothes and repurposed them into more trendy styles. This is a more realistic way to incorporate the idea of a circular economy for the younger generations. Unfortunately, neither of them responded to me either. I did not want my research to stop here though, so I decided to take matters into my own hands and thrift flip a couple of pieces I found at my local Goodwill. One of the US's means of, a couple of recycling these clothes is Goodwill, which is a good start, but less than 20% of the clothing donations are actually sold. Here you see some pieces of clothing that I bought for under $10 each and repurposed with either fabric paint or scraps of other fabric. I hope you enjoyed my presentation and enjoyed the last couple shots of my own clothing. I hope you, I hope you take this into consideration the next time you go shopping. Thank you.